Okay, my name is Karol Czukowski. I work for Scalac, and this is the title of this talk. But I think uh, uh, this is a wrong title because I should uh, change it to something like uh, uh, how to use the Scala compiler with a little bit of uh, shape and spicy stuff, something like that, because this is the way it it, it will work. Uh, okay, before we start, a small disclosure: I'm a horse. I met the Shapers library less than a year ago, so don't treat me like an expert here. Uh, so I can lie a little bit, but I hope you won't find that. And why I decided to do that talk? Uh, well, uh, during the last Scholar conference, there was a guy called, called George Leontief, and he made a talk uh, with the title Case Study for a Real World Type Level Programming. Well, you know, uh, he was showing during the talk how they, because he was working or he's still working for a uh, uh, SoundCloud company, I think, uh, how they were using Shapers to uh, do some kind of the JSON serialization and all of those stuff. And I was a little bit disappointed because uh, this example uh, more likely came directly from the uh, Dave Garnell book, which I will recall here probably a couple of times. So, I, but from the other hand, I can understand him because he had only 30 minutes to do that. So yeah, he was showing some kind of the code snippets, but I think this talk more likely passed away. And I, in my opinion, every talk should have some educational seat. You call it such way. Okay, so we need a uh, real life example. So right now, please imagine that uh, you have been hired by the company that needs to integrate a uh, banking payment system. <laughs> and uh, I know this, this, is, this is kind of the boring stuff probably, but they pay shit a lot of money. So it would be good for you to do that project. And uh, your client already has a working environment where there is a bunch of the microservices and in fact uh, your job is to integrate two of those microservices. Uh, but they have incompatible interfaces. Uh, vendor A component, because it comes from the vendor A, uh, produces messages of the type A, but vendor B component wants to consume messages of the type B. So what business people want from you is to create the adapter between, between those two, where you be, will be mapping A to B. Okay? Clear. A little bit. So far, so good. Uh, how the mapping looks? Don't ask me. There is a business guy who will give you all of the rules. Okay? So you just sit down like a monkey. You just implement everything. Okay? But you pay a shit lot of money for that. So that's good. Uh, so the architecture is more likely simple for that. How uh, the messages can look like. So here we have the A message format. The examples may be a little bit artificial, but uh, you should kind of feel what, what we have to do. Uh, let's assume this is a bank transfer. So you have the ID for such transfer. The account from the bank transfer comes. The account where the bank transfer goes. And there is an amount of money and the date when it occurred, right? So this is the A message format that producer produces, okay? The A vendor. But the B vendor component wants to consume something like that. I know this is completely stupid because I made that, sorry. There still would be something like a chat money transfer and there are two things, right? So uh, there is the account number and the balance D for that account, something like that. So we are sending 100 pounds from one account to the another, okay? Our architecture of our adapter, let me just make it smaller. It's very simple, right? Because we are consuming messages, later on we are doing the mapping A, R, O, B, and produce B. Completely simple stuff. Uh, but I forget to uh, give you additional information uh, that uh, this A message format is just one of the 20 messages you have to support. They are doing m more messages there, like uh, you know, Forex, Swap, Spot, or something like that, okay? I'm not the banking industry, okay? But you may kind of feel uh, 
the problem here. Okay, but so you're almost done with everything. Invoice is already filled for the shit, a lot of cash for you. You just await the disbursement, but suddenly business people came to you and they told you that, well, you know, we need to change a little bit because we've decided to upgrade the vendor B component. And right now it's, it wants from us to add additional data there. Uh, so right now we need to add the IBAN and the sort code associated with each account. But don't worry, don't worry man, there is a third microservice in our environment which can provide you such information. All, all, all of the things you have to do is just uh, give him the account number and it will magically provide you the IBAN and the sort code, okay? So the architecture of uh, <laughs> of your adapter gets a little bit more complicated because uh, before you started, you together with your team decided to check the ACA streams, you know, uh, Lightband issues uh, five tweets e each day, so it must be either crappy or amazing piece of software, so you wanted to check that, and suddenly it occurs that the uh, only thing you can do, because you have the deadline for three days, is to add another processing element, okay? So you add this another processing element right here, uh, so the flow is a little bit more complicated. You firstly uh, consume the A message, later on you have to extract all of the accounts from this A message, and for each account you have to ask this third party microservice what is the IBAN and the sort, sort code for such account, okay? And it returns you the information, and late, later on you have TROB, where T is right now the message you have consumed, and this map of the account and IBAN with sort code, okay? And just after the mapping, you are producing the message, the B message, so later on, the B vendor component just easily eats such message, okay? So during the rest of this talk, we will focus on this block. How can we extract accounts from the message we already received, okay? So let's assume this is our bank transfer. This is the message we consumed. And it has two accounts. One is this from, and the another was one is where we should uh, transfer the money, okay? So the, fir the first solution, and the, very, the most simple one, is to just simply write a function, right? Uh, extract all accounts from bank transfer and it will return us a list of the accounts. The implementation is uh, very simple, right? Because this is a bank transfer from, with, bank transfer to, and with new, right? A list terminator. So this is probably the best solution you can do, but uh, you need to keep in mind that you need to support 20 of those messages, right? So there will be probably uh, something like the Forex stuff and so on and so forth. So you have to maintain those 20 functions. Uh, this will not be the best solution for you. But uh, what will happen when, uh, for example, the model we change, because model is always uh, changing, <laughs> and there will be something new, like a new field, right? Like the intermediate account. of, I don't know, such type, for example, right? So right now this function either has the wrong in implementation or the name, right? So we have to deal with such situation and each time we should update this thing. So the idea is to go with shapeless to resolve that thing. Uh, and this uh, resolution is more like a called a uh, implicit type class derivation. So because I said implicit type class derivation, so we need a type class for that, well, that will be the basics of our interface to do that. So let me create one. It will be the trait called account extractor. Okay, it will take some type and we will have the ability to extract account from some type. And at the end it will return me, returns me a list of the accounts that some A type aggregates, okay? Uh, I need uh, uh, some sugar for that, so let me create the companion object. Apply A 
updates it AE account extractor A A remove that part and here I will return the AE okay so with this sugar from the this object I can do something like that account extractor for the bank transfer extract accounts from my bank transfer value I've defined here okay so this is just more likely the sugar and through the rest of the stock we will fight to force the compiler to provide us the value in this place right that we want because uh, as you can see I didn't call that part here uh, explicitly I am assuming that compiler will give me something to this parameter list so let's check whether it works of course it does not work uh, I need to yeah there is a mistake I think sorry I knew that it would happen by the way live copy yeah I don't know why did you compile it before? I think yeah I did that I don't know why <laughs> okay so let's do it in the other way I have the wrong, wrong package name so I will do the USD okay and because it was working such way yeah right now I have no implicit value parameter for my bank transfer okay so what I can do right now is to define the implicit value for my BT extractor which will be the account extractor for my bank transfer and here I have to provide oh no 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 a new account extractor yeah. so what I can do right now is I can uh, fold that into the convert expression to a single abstract yeah, so I will have the one method here but more likely I will finish with the things that I have removed with the method where I have to uh, explicitly get all of the accounts from my bank transfer okay I don't have to do that probably right now you know what I'm talking about or maybe go for it okay so I go go it will be fast a to to with a from with new okay so I get I want to get rid of that I want the compiler to do this part for me so uh, before we go further I will comment out this part and we have to think about uh, some uh, with some basic types how would look the account extractor for the type like integer okay and how many accounts I can extract from such value of course right now it won't work because I'm missing the this part right compiler doesn't know what to put here so I need to give it give him that in the, into the scope uh, into x account extractor for my integer type so having any integer how many accounts it has zero right so I need to return the list empty because this is the interface I defined here right this is what I'm implementing right now uh, so we can think more about some more types like a string for example like uh, I don't know boolean and this one will be interesting about an account okay will that work of course not because I'm missing so implicit values for those types okay let me just quickly do those boolean this will be list empty here is a string need to adjust the name uh, and this is account right okay here will be the account oh sorry 
account. So I will just wrap this account into the list, right? Because this is everything I have to do with that. So when it comes to the string, I will also have empty list because this parameter was not used. So I put the placeholder here. The same stuff goes here and here, right? So it more likely works. Yeah, I have empty list for the integer, for the string, uh, for the boolean, and list with one account for the account type, okay? But uh, there is a main idea behind the shapeless, and it's called scrap your boilerplate. Uh, I don't know if you see, but those three implementations look exactly the same. Only thing that differs here is this type. So let me get rid of that, and I want to create the implicit function this time. Uh, which will provide me the empty extractor for any type. It will be the account extractor for this any type. And this, it will have the same implementation like those commented above. List empty. So right now I have exactly the same behavior. Empty list, at least with one, one account. But uh, I don't know if you see such great property I've made already because uh, any type in the world right now will fall down into this empty extractor uh, unless I will define some specific extractor with the most more strict type for some of them, right? Because there's, this is here is an account, so in the scope exists the account, the account extractor for account. So this one was taken into consideration for that expression, right? Because this is the reason why we are having here list with one account. Otherwise, if I will command this out and run the code, I will have empty list here. And we will gonna reuse such property, but we have to be careful. Uh, I don't want to uh, go into the details right now, because you will see that later on, that uh, here are no constraints. Right? So it works for any type. It can swallow everything. And it, you will see that later. Okay, so uh, right now I can comment out this last part. But in fact, it still returns me an empty list. So there is an algorithm what I should do to force the compiler to provide me valid value there. And I will write it down right now. And later on I will explain you what it means, okay? So uh, I have to switch my bank transfer into bank transfer or any other type uh, into its, let me call that dual representation Shion. <laughs> <laughs> it uh, will be H list in our example. Okay, and later for each LM within such H list, I have to find uh, account extractor and to use it. Okay, and the last step is to concat all intermediate results via list free column operator, okay? So uh, what does it mean to switch bank, bank transfer or any other type into its dual representation H list? Uh, I should ask before we started this talk, how many of you ever use shapeless, but this would be completely stupid. So uh, for those who are unfamiliar with that, let me just quickly uh, write one example of the H list. Uh, H list. It will be the H list for, for example, like uh, UUID, string, boolean, uh, account, and H nil. But I have to yeah, import this part and import the colon colon operator from the shapes. Okay, but uh, this is the type of my H list. Okay, so how looks the value of such type? This will be the UUID, for example, uh, random, random, yeah, some string, 
some boolean some account and the list terminator so here you see that this is the predefined list which has uh, I would say the predefined type uh, it, was, it is always I don't know four or five it depends how you treat the h new and at each position it must have uh, the exact type okay I cannot for example put here a string because it won't compile so this is the h list what does it mean to uh, convert or switch bank transfer into its dual representation there, there is a tool for that it is called the generic from the shapeless here I'm providing the bank transfer type and it has for example the method 2 where I can provide the bank transfer value so right now line 40 once again line 40 Update. yeah you will see that switching bank transfer into its dual representation means uh, sorry that I will have the H list from the, all of those types that it aggregates, right? So you see it has the UID, so I'll have the H list where the first position I will have the UID, later on I will have the account, account, amount, date, and so on and so forth. So we can see it over here. Yeah, I have the UID as the first type, uh, account, account, amount, date, H new, and those values, right? So, we know how to do the first part, but uh, what to do with the second part? So, uh, the second part means that we need to uh, provide and make working following expression. Account extractor, let me copy this part, so I won't write that explicitly here. I need an account extractor for the H list, right? Um, this part also. Yeah, so I can get rid of that. Bah, bah, bah. And will it work? I don't know. Line 38, right? 38. Empty list. Why? Because, as I said, like for any other type in the world, it will fall down into my empty extractor. Unless I will define method which will be able to extract Accounts, which will be able to provide me the account extractor for my H list type. How can I write the H list over there? Ah, there is a some smart thing. I can write it in a such way, but I need to put those parameters here. It will be head and tail. Uh, since H list is a recurs recursive type, it means that it consists from the head and tail, where tail is the H list itself. Okay, so I see here I have. I don't know, five types, so I see five H lists here, more likely, okay? Since the tail is the H list itself, so let me put such constraint here. Uh, and now I can almost provide the implementation here. So you should see, right, the implementation is missing some. I'm on a good path because right now compiler decided to use my function here. But I need to demand something from the compiler. Oh, sorry, let me do this such way be easier to read that. I want the compiler to give me the account extractor for my H type. And it exists, right? Because it, it can be either the empty extractor or the extractor for the account, right? And I will demand compiler to give me uh, the account extractor for my tail type. And this one is tricky because tail itself, itself is a H list and since uh, I've defined the H list extractor over here right you can see this type so it means that compiler will do a recursion here at this point at during the compile time okay I can prove you that but I don't know if we have a time there is a Scala uh, runtime reflect you uh, reify and you can see what compiler put over there okay Nevertheless, so what we are missing here is uh, implementation. So having my H list value, what I can do with that, uh, you know, uh, I watched Pavel Schultz presentation and he said that those things should be auto-generated by some plugin because I should only follow types here. So I can use the H extractor, extract method, supply it with the H list uh, head 
head and concatenate such result because extract method gives me a list, right? So I can concatenate this with the tail extractor and supply to its extract method the tail of my edge list. So you see I have the one liner here and suddenly based with my building blocks, which I have two extractors for account and the empty one, uh, I'm able to extract line, this is 44, accounts from my edge list, right? You see the, there was one account was extracted. Okay, so I think the second part is more likely done. So, uh, but we are still missing the account extractor for the bank transfer because it returns an empty list. So uh, that's obvious because I said uh, every type will fall down into the empty extractor unless I will provide some more specific for this type. So let me do that. Implicit def. Uh, I will call that generic extractor tor. It will be the account extractor for my type A. And I will put this type over here. Since I already have such a function with such signature in the scope, this is the empty extractor, so I need to provide uh, some constraints here that it will ro work for any product because since the bank transfer is a case class and each case class is a product more likely, uh, we can do this in the following way. But I will also probably have to demand some part from the compiler here. Okay, this part will be a little bit tricky because I want the compiler to give me the generic from the shapeless library uh, aux for my A type, which will have the representation which I'm missing on my parameter list. Uh, okay, this uh, is probably madness for you, and this is completely underst understandable. Uh, this is uh, something. Uh, called a dependent types. Uh, what you should know about that, uh, you should treat this as a function, but in your daily basis you are dealing with the functions, with the values, but this is the function uh, which is dealing with the types. It means that for any A type, in our case it would be the bank transfer, uh, you can su supply the A type to such function and it will return you the, its representation. Okay, this is the return thing from my function, uh, this is the input parameter to my function, okay? So this representation in case of our bank transfer is the H list. So I will put such constraint here. To be honest, if I wouldn't do that, uh, some part of the code won't work right now. But we know that this is the H list, so I can put such constraint over here. And the last part, because representation is the H list, and we have already defined the extractor for the H list, so I will demand that there exists the representation extractor, which is the account extractor for my wrapper type, okay? And this, this exists because I have done it over here, right? So once another, another time we need a plugin to auto-generate the code. So having our A type value, what I can do with this, so I can call the generic to method and supply with the A type. Uh, you see the IntelliJ already gave me something like rep, so I can use the rep ax, extract, give here the rep, right, extract gives me less, types are okay, so I'm more likely think done. So let's see what the last expression will give me right now. Uh, yeah, I have the list with one account and the another one. So right now we are more likely done with this stack, but not quite at all. Uh, let's see whether it works for any type, right? Because I can supply here anything. So I have some dummy type called bus. Now let me do the extract of that type. Bus is a type which aggregates integer and bar. Bar is a type which aggregates integer and foo. But foo is a type which aggregates account. Account. So you see here the account is at the very bottom of this class hierarchy. Uh, let's see whether our solution works. Well, in fact, it doesn't work because of the things we made at the very beginning. I mean, 
because this because of this empty extractor. What happened here? I don't want to go to the details of that, but uh, you need to know that providing uh, the simplicity parameter from the compiler persp perspective is a search process. And when the compiler deals with the types which are recursive, like the hlist, uh, it needs to have some heuristics, I think, uh, which will pro which will help him to get rid of some infinite loops he may occur there so we need to somehow avoid so those heuristics and there is a way to do that uh, it is this workaround comes from the shapeless library and it's called lazy and there are two rules of thumb how to apply such lazy thing and the first rule says that oh sorry that you need to apply lazy into the implicit parameter list wherever you are dealing with the head of your age list. So this is such place. So let me apply lazy. This is the way how you do that. Lazy. Yeah. But before I could call ex extract, I need to call value. So this was the first rule of thumb. The second rule of thumb says that you need to apply lazy wherever you are, to the implicit parameter list, of course, wherever you are dealing with the representation type, which is the output from your uh, generic converter, okay? So this is my representation type, which is the output from generic converter, and this is the place where I'm dealing with this type. So here I have to apply the lazy. This, by the way, this rule came from the, uh, this Dave Garner book I read some time ago. So I have to call the value here. And right now we can get rid of such compiler behavior and probably our solution should work. Yeah, it works, right? I have, the, have one account that was taken directly from the bottom of this classes hierarchy. Okay, so I would say that we are more, more likely done but let's do uh, right now something that I wouldn't call Sheldon Cooper fun with plaques, but uh, fun with types, okay? Uh, since in uh, your daily basis, in this, uh, your Scala world, you are dealing more likely with the types like option, okay? For example, for the bank transfer or a list. Well, this is the most common, I would say, containers or whatever we can call that. Uh, so let's see uh, how we can, uh, what we can extract from such things. Okay, I have the sum of bank transfer. Okay, here I will have uh, extract a list of bank transfer, bank transfers. Okay, so here I think that it should return me. Uh, four accounts, right, because there are two for each bank transfer. And here I want to have two uh, accounts, right? Whether it works or not. Yeah, it returns me an empty list because there is no bank, uh, there is no account extractor provider for the types which looks like that, okay? So, you know, there is a, they both have such a common property. We can see it over here because I can call the fault method at the option, okay? And the same thing I can do over here. There is also the fault method. So, great, we know, they are foldable. So I can use the Scala Z and write the uh, extractor for the foldable. So this is, uh, by the way, this is the example how you can compose some other type classes into your existing solution, right? Okay, implicit default double extractor, account extractor for my higher kind of type of BA. Okay, so I need to put such things over here. There is the A, but I'm not done yet here. I need to demand something from the compiler. I want him to give me uh, some parameters. It will be the full double type class instance for my F type, okay, which comes from the scalas. Uh, 
and later on I want to have the account extractor for my A-type, okay? And having my FA, right now I need to implement that. What I can do here is I can call, for example, foldable and it has some great method. Yeah, I learned that code by heart. <laughs> it has some great method like fold map. You see, I can supply the FA, which I recently have. And here I need to supply some function which takes this inner A and returns B. So I already have such function and this is my extract, right? It takes A and returns B, but you need to see that this B must form, there is a requirement that it forms a monoid. So this itself forms a monoid, so I can do that very simple. I can extractor, extract, I repose the function object here and I'm done, almost because I need to import the Scala Sphinx. Import Scala standard all instances would be the most easier part. And yeah, I have extracted my icons. There are four, four are on the lower part, there are two on the upper. Uh, what is the more funny thing about that is that I can create the account extractor and compose those two types. It will also work. Okay, I will, can have the list of the option of the bank transfer, for example, right? Can do the extract list no ne some but no ne. Yeah, and I will have two accounts from this part of code, right? And the last one, and the best one, I think, common type we are dealing with in Scala, is of course the either, either type. I will give the left value a string, for example. Here, here will be the bank transfer. Thanks for the updates right now. String. So let me see what accounts I will be able to extract from the right value of the bank transfer. Uh, unfortunately, I'm unable to extract anything. Does any one of you know why? Because here I have the RET2 type constructor. It takes two types. And here I have defined function for the RET1 type constructor. So more likely things I can do right now is to copy paste this part and adjust the types here, right? So here I have the RET2, I will have the left and right type. Here I have left and right, account extractor. Uh, here I need to partially apply my left type, okay? because Foldable wants me to provide here RET1 type constructor, so I'm partially applying only the left type, leaving the right type here, and here I have the right, and I'm done, I think. Oh yeah, I need to change this too. <laughs> yeah, and that works, but in fact, we are facing here some, once another time the boilerplate, right? It's, it is exactly the same, like the implementation above. So what I can do with that? Uh, well, you know, the things we are facing here is called the infamous SI2712 Scala bug. Uh, and this is very, the very old bug. It appears, I don't know, in 2007. And the Scala communi community works with that lift, with lift, lift, with that bug, I don't know, for the next seven years and Mike Sabin finally fixed that. Uh, you can watch his talk, fighting SI2712 with dependent types and type level continuation passing from a flat map, flat, flat map also. This is a very inspiring story, I would say. Even too much inspiring because it can lead to some parado paradox, but I don't want to talk about that. And uh, later on you can, I encourage all of you to read uh, Daniel Spiewak explaining Miles magic. It's also a good GitHub gist. Uh, article about that. Uh, but before that fix, you can see how it was done in, for example, CATS or Scalas with the unapply thing. You can find it in Eugenio Cotta series. 
about those two libraries. So I can apply this fix and it will work. Uh, so what does it mean for me? Uh, even how, how to apply that fix? So I can even delete that part, go to my SBT and add a Scala C option, like the partial unification, which will enable enable this my saving fix. Uh, so what it does for me, it unifies the RET2 type constructor, which is right biased. I don't want to go deeper, what, what, what does it mean? To the function I have already implemented here, the foldable uh, uh, extractor for the RET1 type constructor, okay? So right now, SBT, okay, SBT is done. So this part should work here, also without the additional boilerplate. Okay, I think we, we are done, but does any one of you ever spotted where I light here during that talk? No idea? Okay, we never use shapeless for that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's all. Uh, maybe you have yeah. some questions, yeah? Uh, what, uh, why do you choose uh, PNG files as your presentation? I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it was a default when I was uh, painting something in a paint or something, I don't know. Just what's PNG and that's all. I got another question. Yeah. Uh, would it be possible to uh, achieve the same thing without empty extractor? Because it looks quite dangerous. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. You could uh, write uh, explicitly those extractors for each type that you are dealing with, okay? This is the other solution. Or you could maybe add the constraint to the empty extractor that it should work for the type less, like an eval or something like that. So. More likely, but yeah, this is dangerous because, uh, as you have seen, uh, when compiler needs to provide you the implicit value, uh, from its perspective, is a search process, and in our particular case, it had two branches to traverse, but one of those branches immediately failed because of this implicit divergence problem for the recursive type like HList, but suddenly there was another one branch, which was the empty extractor one. Right, and it <coughs> swallows everything. So this is the reason why there, why we had the empty list for the bus type, right? Okay. One more question: uh, How would you approach uh, the case if you would like to extract from both uh, from both sides of I either? You need to do this. You need to write explicitly, kind of, yeah, because this partial unification works only for right bias types. So if you have the left bias type, then you are, wouldn't say you are in trouble, but you have to deal with it on your own, something like that. But by the way, what you think about the code structure of such solution? Because uh, with the 25 lines of codes, we were able to extract accounts from any type in the world. I would just write the 20 extractions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are there any runtime implications of having those uh, in your compile time? Uh, this works at compile time, right? Because compiler needs to provide us the types and do the, all of the resolution. And when you are working at the right time, uh, everything is completely type safe because things happen at the compile time here. Have you measured the compile time? No, 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 <laughs> no. Yeah, because if you, uh, probably if you use uh, a lot of the shapeless stuff, then you compile time gets decreasing, I would say. But uh, as far as I know, uh, a lot of the bugs were fixed for that. So the compile times are not quite bad at all, I think. Yeah? You mentioned some heuristics uh, yeah. for, well, for the compiler to solve the bugs. So is it the case that you always know what the outcome will be, or sometimes you just have to guess what the compiler will be? Uh, okay, so the compiler need to have some heuristics, I think, because the age list type can be different at any time, okay? Because you see, I can have string string boolean or something, or boolean string string account something. This is completely different type. So compiler need to do recursion through such age list and just deal with it somehow.
about the rules of the camp for the lazy. Is yeah. it something that a uh, mere mortal can understand or is it like just <laughs> supply it? Um, those, uh, uh, I call those rules here uh, from the Dave Garner book. So I do not know more about that because this lazy is a kind of the macro as I saw in the library there. So I was not trying to understand what this macro is doing. Is it explained in the book? Or? Uh, yeah, with those two rules of thumb. <laughs> 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 so I wouldn't say that it's explained a lot, but yeah. You told us that uh, you haven't used the shape as it was the line. Yeah. The generic is also the macro. Or what is it? Generic is, yeah, it is also the macro. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs>